Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another travel microphone review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Shure MV5. If you are interested in this microphone, it'll set you back about a hundred bucks on Amazon. As per usual, link in the description. And for this video, I'm connecting the mic directly to my Mac with the input gain set at around 70% on the flat mode. I will do no post processing to the audio, but I may boost it in post. So check the doobly-doo for more information. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. That was close. Obviously, you're going to get the microphone. You get a microphone stand. You get a one meter lightning cable. And you get a one meter USB-A cable. As far as the build quality, it is a bit underwhelming. The body is all plastic and it feels a bit cheaper than I would like it to be. The stand, on the other hand, does feel like it is an all aluminum construction. On the bottom of the mic, you'll find a quarter inch mount, which is the same as a camera or a tripod. On the back, you're gonna find a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, which does offer latency free monitoring. And if you have it connected to your computer, you can also use it to play back audio. You'll also find the port to connect this to your computer or iOS device. You'll find a mode button to switch between flat, speech, and instrument modes and you'll find a mute button. On the top of the mic, you're gonna find a headphone volume control, and then you'll find a set of three indicator lights. When just this single light is turned on, that means you are in the flat mode. When these lights are on, that means you are in the instrument mode. And when these lights are on, that means you are in the speech mode. And when all three lights are blinking red, that means the microphone is muted. As far as specs, this thing has a unidirectional or cardioid polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 40 decibels, a max SPL of 130 decibels, a bit depth of 16 or 24 bit, and a sampling rate of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to determine what the actual polar pattern is and how the audio changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now I'm banging on a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blues directly behind the MV5 to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now you can see that my sound preferences are up and my gain is set at around 70%. I'll drop this down to 0% and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise is generated by this mic's preamp. 25%. and 100%. Now I'm recording the microphone directly to my iPad using the Shure Motive app, which is what it was designed for, and this is how the audio sounds. Right now, I'm about one foot away from the microphone on the flat mode, and this is how the microphone sounds. I'm still about one foot away from the microphone on the speech mode, and this is how the microphone sounds. And lastly, I'm still at one foot on the instrument mode, and this is how the audio sounds. And just in case you're traveling and you have a Joby Gorilla Pod for your camera, you can throw this thing directly onto the tripod and use this as your mic stand to podcast in a hotel room or anything like that. One microphone is the best. I don't know, so let's go buy them all and test them all out. So we'll know what mic that we should go and buy sound the best online so overall i just wasn't really impressed with this microphone and i'm really not sure who it was made for in terms of pros it is incredibly small it does have a decent preamp it's compatible with mac and your ios devices it has built-in effects it has latency free monitoring and you can use a tripod as your mic stand which would limit the amount of gear you need to take with you while you're traveling but in terms of cons, the build quality just isn't up to sure standards. I don't think the preset effects are that amazing. And most importantly, this microphone is very difficult to get into a decent microphone placement for whatever you're recording. 
So even though this microphone is decent, I just don't think I can recommend it to anybody. And the reason I say that is the only use case I see this mic filling is a travel microphone. And because it is a plastic build quality, I just wouldn't trust it to be traveled with. But if you do want a travel microphone setup, I would highly suggest checking out the MVI with the Shure SM58. And I'll link my review to the interface up in one of these corners. All right, guys. Well, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Get that a suck thumbs down. If you want to influence the gear that I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage and cast your votes there. And also, don't forget to follow me on all the social media stuff. Links at the bottom of this screen. If you want more videos just like this subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me and i will see you all on friday thanks for watching bye